Anybody know what country this flag belongs to? How many countries have a dragon on their flag? Anybody know which country that is? Wales! Croesio e Cymru, absolutely. Welcome to Wales. So this is the land of my birth. Um, contrary to popular belief, my accent is not from Alabama. It's actually... Um, <laughs> so I'm Welsh and not actually English. Um, and Wales is known for many things. Wales is known for beautiful landscapes, sheep, um, and castles. Very sort of romantic land, a lot of, lot of history there. It's also known for one of the longest place names in the world. So if you'd like to repeat that after me, you're more than welcome to try. We're about to take a little step inside Little Welsh Primary School, as we would call it, uh, elementary school here. And we're going to go inside a classroom, and we're going to actually do a lesson in the primary language of Welsh. So this is a little village school, much like a school that I attended when I grew up. Um, and yeah, today we're going to do a lesson in Welsh. Let's have a look at this. Uh, we're going to do a math lesson. So here you go. Um, obviously, everybody understands exactly what's going on here. I'm sure it makes perfect sense. In case you had a little difficulty with it, let's, um, let's just, we, we can actually get you to speak here. Amri bai un adroi indi, nor do cha oes gan bob ffigur dwy ran o bim poi cysgodol cyfan. Okay, did that help everybody? Everybody? So just in case that didn't, we can play it louder. Amri bai un adroi indi, nor do cha oes gan bob ffigur dwy ran o bim poi cysgodol cyfan. So at which point we've kind of run out of most teachers' strategies for teaching students that are learning other than the language of primary instruction. So let's try a totally different approach. So I, I taught myself um, in Los Angeles. I taught a lot of English language learners, not through the medium of Welsh. That would have been way too complicated. But, um, but you know, certainly when I started, um, I really didn't have a good idea of how to teach those students. And, and we're going to look at some ways that we can be effective doing that. So what I'd like you to do is those devices which you're sort of super, surreptitiously doing things on, take one of them out. It can be a phone, a tablet, a computer, or somebody next to you. Take out a, some device, hopefully you're on the web, and go to this website. Which, so it's a Google shortened address, goo.gl forward slash V capital U N G H eight. And when you get there, and you should, a phone should be fine, any, any, any device should work, you should see a kind of puzzle that looks a little bit like the thing on the screen. So I'm gonna, anybody having any trouble? Everybody got there? Can somebody tell me mathematically, what was it that enabled you to get across the screen? What was the mathematics going on? Um, in that fractions, yeah, and specifically, what did you have to do to be successful in this game? Somebody said something very critical over here. Follow instructions, yes, no, there was a specific mathematical type of thing I was looking for. Thirds, yes, more, a little more general. Equal parts, so I heard it from multiple places. You had to split this thing into equal parts, which of course is a critical idea of fractions. So those of you that were successful were able to split this into equal parts. Okay, so unfortunately the next game I don't have it for you to do, so we're going to have to do it together. So here we go, I split it into equal parts and it comes down. Okay, so now let's have a look at another puzzle. So now we're going to do something a little different and I'm going to trans move for a moment into a different language. So we're doing Rano bimp. Do we rano bimp? And I go. In, die, tree, pedwa, pimp. You can say with me. In, die, tree, pedwa, pimp. Okay. In, die. Okay. Dewey, Rano, Bimp. Now, Dewey, Rano, Bimp. In Havod, I Pede, Rano, Deg. Dewey, Rano, Bimp. I Havod, I Pede, Rano, Deg. Okay. 
pedech an odeg in havod i chwech rano bimpteg. Of course, bimpteg, yes. Dwi rano bimp in havod i pedech an odeg, pedech an odeg in havod i chwech rano bimpteg. Fraction gifwerth. Fraction gifwerth. Okay, travel de mathematic. Discuss the mathematics in each of these three things. We did three different things here. Discuss the mathematics in any language you choose, as long as the person next to you can understand it. Let's just take 30 seconds and just discuss mathematically what was happening in each one of these. We talked about this one. This was really about equal partitioning. So just discuss what was going on in the second one and then what was going on in the third. Let's just see if we can get a little uh, response here. So we got the first one was for equal partitioning. What happened in the second puzzle, which I did myself, unfortunately, you weren't able to do it, but what happened in the second one? What did we do? What did this puzzle effectively do? Yeah, parts of a whole. We built a fraction, right, that was two-fifths. And then what was the last piece kind of all about? It's like I sort of did a little lesson in Welsh. Equivalent fractions. Fraction gifwerth, right? So now suddenly it's very easy to understand that. Okay, so we're going to learn two other little words in Welsh that are very, very, very tiny. Um, we're going to learn the Welsh word for yes, which is remarkably simple. It's yeah. Okay. Right. And the Welsh word for no, which is dim. Okay, so yeah or dim. And we're going to go back to that original question that we saw, and we're going to see how much of it we can get right. So, the moment of truth. Am riffai, wan ei drwy, wan di, nod o chai sgan bob e figur, dwi ran o bimp a cysgodl cyfan. Ie o dim? Ie. Ie o dim? Good job. Da iawn. Ie o dim? Oh, too good. Ie o dim? Perfection. Fantastic, good job. Give yourselves a round of applause. It's fantastic. The, the key points here is that there's a myth sometimes that English learners learn differently or that they need a different type of instruction. And in fact, they just need good instruction. Good instruction should look like that, regardless of who you're teaching, not necessarily in Welsh. I'm not trying to say that instruction in Welsh is the best, although obviously it is. But, um, but, but the fact is that there's a lot of neuroscience going on here, and something we've spoken about a lot in the past, this, this whole idea of if you're going to learn something, especially you're going to learn it deeply, we have to engage your perception action cycle. And this is a, an inbuilt neuroscientific uh, sort of neuro process. Everybody has this. You perceive, you act. On the basis of that act, you perceive something else and you act again. It's this cycle of perception and action. And it's through that cycle that we learn. And if that cycle is not engaged, guess what? Not a whole lot of learning is gonna happen. And what you were able to do by taking a question that was basically a meaningless jumble of letters and giving you a chance to gradually get hands-on and then sort of get engaged in the process, that perception action cycle is engaged. You're now sort of part of solving the problem. You're engaged in it. And, and there's, a, there's a key piece here. One of the things that we use when we're problem solving, whenever we're confronted with a new situation, so um, whatever it might be, any, anything at all, we use our existing schema. We have in our mind, we have laid down existing ideas, ways of thinking about the world, and we use those to solve problems. And of course, many times, we bring those existing schema to bear, we, we confront some problem, we go, oh, I think this will solve it, and we take an action based upon those existing schema, and two things happen. There's some outcome, we perceive that outcome, and then there's a little part of our brain called the hippocampus, deep inside, two little things that look like seahorses, and our perception slams up against our prediction. And either what we predicted would happen does happen. And when that happens, what do you think occurs to your existing schema? Whatever the existing idea that helped you make that prediction, if that turns out to be true, what does that do to that existing schema? 
It strengthens it. It goes, oh, yes, and literally you build stronger and deeper neural networks connected to that schema because it proved to be correct. But the really interesting learning moments happen, of course, when you make a prediction and that prediction does not match the perception. Because at that moment, what does your brain do? Panic? <laughs> what is your what do you, what do you, what do you, and you, you've seen these moments happen a thousand times in classrooms. What do you call those moments when perception does not match prediction? Those are the, those are learning moments. Those are those times right at that moment where a student is like, ah, oh, that didn't turn out the way I thought it would do. And suddenly they're ripe to learn. But to make any of that happen, Students have to be hands-on. They have to be making predictions. They cannot be passively sitting there accepting this information. So this goes, obviously, for English learners, but it also speaks volumes about the way we need to teach all students. So we have a math program, ST Math, and the name of the penguin is Gigi, yes. And it's built entirely around this sort of system of, of learning. It's game-based learning, hands-on learning. Students learn by doing. They learn by making mistakes, by figuring things out. And of course, it's, it's also highly, highly visual. The, the key thing for us is that this has already shown itself to be very powerful and that this works extremely well. We have a million students using the program across the country. And we've seen large-scale data studies um, in many, many, many states, including a very significant one here from a company called WestEd that was an independent study, showing a significant increase in proficiency on students using the program compared with a large control group of students not using the program. The interesting thing here is the scale of these studies. These are not 177 students versus 100 my eyesight was even good enough, I could read it, 129. That's not the number of students. I think that's either the number of schools or the, yes, actually number of schools involved in the studies. These are large scale studies. Um, and we've also seen in those studies that the pace of learning for English learners is equally as fast, if not sometimes faster at the beginning as for all other students. So the, the thing that we see regularly is that suddenly English learners have, as I said, a sort of level playing field, a way to demonstrate that they do understand what is going on, um, but they've never had that opportunity before. I was actually in a school relatively recently, I think it was about a, maybe a year ago, um, in, I think it's Granite USD, which is somewhere, Ivan, is it, no, it's not. Utah. I knew it was somewhere near where you were. Okay, it's in Utah, um, Granite USD. And I was in an elementary school, and there was a, in a kindergarten classroom, and the principal was showing me around the school, and the school was using ST Math. They were very excited. They had it relatively recently. And they had some student was causing a bit of a disruption in another class, and they brought the student into this particular class to see if he could calm down a little bit. And she was saying, oh, we really don't know quite what to do with him. You know. It, she was asking me, do they use different mathematical symbols in, I think it was Cambodia or somewhere where he was from, and I'm like, I don't know. She said, because he doesn't understand numbers. He, doesn't, he just doesn't understand anything whatsoever. We, we really don't quite know what to do with him. So they decided to sort of sit him in front of a computer, or at least let him play some games, whereupon the student very quickly ordered all the numbers from 1 to 20 along a number line perfectly and demonstrated, in fact, that he understood numbers very, very well. The problem was that the way that they were testing whether he understood numbers was through the medium of the English language, of which he spoke zero. So there was very little um, that he was able to do in that kind of sort of language-driven environment test. But suddenly, when put on a computer where the student can now access this himself, he was able to fly along, and, and move, which is very, very powerful and impactful to see. But for now, I'm gonna do something quite remarkable. Randy, you're gonna love it. I'm gonna finish slightly early and say, Dielch and Vauer, you can say it with me, Dielch and Vauer, and that which means have a good day, by the way, and Borida.